So Omnipod 5, I have to admit, I was wrong. You were right. You were the best. I'm the worst. You're uh, very good looking. I'm not that attractive. I'm sorry. I have been using this insulin pump called the Omnipod 5 for about six months now. And instead of contemplating my demise, it actually lengthened it. Now maybe you're in the same boat as I was considering getting your first or your first next gen insulin pump, but you're feeling a little nervous about that decision. Trust me, I totally get it. Before switching to the Omnipod 5, I had some serious doubts. Then I thought to myself, what if I do switch to this and it actually changes my life for the better? But in order to do so, I kind of have to be brave. Well, it turns out I was right to be brave, but I was wrong about a couple things. Now, over time, I actually started to feel pretty confident wearing this device. And I began to realize that my misconceptions were just that, misconceptions. Now before the Omnipod, I thought that the A1C was the be all, end all indicator of diabetes health. I thought that storing insulin in a pod at room temperature was kind of dangerous. And that trusting a robot to give me insulin automatically would be risky business. But after using the Omnipod 5, I was proven wrong and I will admit it, I was wrong about all three assumptions. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you my six month journey with the Omnipod 5 and why I ultimately decided I was wrong to hesitate to switch to an insulin pump. And hopefully this sets your mind at ease about making the big switch. So I switched to the Omnipod 5 and boy was I excited to try out all of the fancy new features. But one thing that really caught my attention was the change in how I was going to measure my diabetes health. Now back in the day, it was about the A1C score. That's all you heard about. What's your A1? How are you doing? What are your numbers at? But now it's all about hitting that target range. Now, if you've never heard of it, the A1C is a metric that diabetes doctors use and it gives them a more accurate picture of blood glucose levels. Now I know what you're thinking. So what the heck is a time and range and why is it important? Let me break it down for you in a way that you can understand. So you know how a roller coaster can be super thrilling with all of its ups and its downs. But when it comes to your blood glucose levels, you don't want that kind of excitement. An A1C may give you an average over the past few months, but it doesn't tell your doctor about the wild ride that you were on. So that's where time and range comes in. It's like a GPS for your glucose levels in real time. And what it does is it shows you how often your blood glucose levels are within a specific range. It gives you a pat on the back for staying within that range. Plus, it's not just about getting a gold star for hitting a number. Time and range can also help you and your healthcare provider to spot patterns in your blood glucose levels like how your levels react after chowing down on a burrito or how you're doing after you hit the gym. With this information, you can make smarter choices about treatment options and lifestyle changes. And as you can see in this video, I took that information and doubled down on making it a goal to stay within my range more often. And what do you know, after six months of use with the Omnipod 5, my A1C actually went down as well. Now, I was also wrong to fear my insulin going bad after three days while in this pod. And if you've ever been told that insulin needs to be stored in a refrigerator at temperature around 36 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit or two to eight degrees Celsius, well, it's true, and doing so will keep your insulin from breaking down while in storage. But if that is really true, then how's it okay to keep your insulin at room temperature for three whole days in this little thing while it sits on your body? Kind of doesn't make sense. Well, it turns out insulin is not like a carton of milk that goes bad after a few hours sitting on your countertop. Insulin is a tough cookie and it can withstand some heat. And by heat, I mean room temperature. Not that I would ever approve of someone doing this, but I once left insulin, one of my insulin pins, in a car seat during the Arizona summer, and uh, I still used it. I didn't die, because if I did, that would just be a weird video, because then I'd be a zombie. Don't believe me? 
watch that video. So if insulin can still work after being stuck in a hot car, hot enough to bake cookies, I'm not kidding, it'll be just fine after resting on your body for three whole days through multiple workouts, direct sunlight, hot showers, or whatever you want to throw at it. I mean, not whatever, but most things. After six whole months of use with the Omnipod 5, I have never had an issue with bad insulin in my pod due to temperature changes. Hey, if you're a type one, type two, Mahdi or Alada and content like this specific to diabetics is important to you, make sure you subscribe to this channel and I will do my best to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of diabetes. I was wrong to be skeptical about letting a machine take over my insulin dosage. Now, I grew up loving robots like Optimus Prime, Rosie, and R2-D2. And I often wondered what it would be like to have one at my disposal. Now, last time I checked, uh, the robot store is fresh out of R2 units. But guess what it does have? That's right a little insulin robot called the Omnipod 5. So serious question, how many times have you forgotten to take your meds? Pay the bills. Your kids' birthdays. I've forgotten those a couple times. I know, I'm bad. With an insulin loop system, you can say goodbye to those did I take my insulin today moments forever. Now let's be real, sometimes we just can't be bothered. We're busy people with important things to do, like parenting, put the knife down, working, or binge watching Stranger Things. <sighs> so why not let the insulin loop system take care of the boring stuff so we can get back to the important things in life? And that's right, with the help of this little robot, I saw an improvement in my time and range and my A1C. After all, insulin loop systems have been proven to be safe and effective in managing diabetes. So, if you're still on the fence about giving it a try, I have a question for you. Who sits on a fence? Because it's like, you, you know, like a uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is using this device helped me be more educated about my diabetes health. It allowed me to be confident to go anywhere wearing my medication on my body. And I no longer fear the decision-making skills of a medical robot. Well, I hope today's information was helpful. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me, and I'll see you next time.